Dublin is a city with a lot of history and a lot of ghosts. John Francis Byrne tells of a most disturbing haunting in his autobiography, The Silent Years. Now, as you will probably know, well, that is if you're more literate than you look, John Francis Byrne was the basis for the character Cranley in James Joyce's book, a portrait of an artist as a young man. Now this particular story happened to Byrne in 1902 when he was a student. He, along with two of his cousins, decided to rent a house on Cork Hill. It was close to City Hall and of course Trinity College. When the cousins first went round to uh, inspect the property, they were greeted by some odd occurrences. Downstairs in one of the rooms, they found the word ghosts written above the mantelpiece. And while they were down there, they thought they could hear footsteps coming from the rooms above. Now they assumed somebody else must have been viewing the property. But later, when they asked the estate agent, they were informed that they were the only potential renters that day. The cousins dismissed these odd things and they continued with their plans to live in the upstairs rooms and to sublet the downstairs rooms as offices. It was John's cousin Mary who first collected the keys and once more went round to inspect the property. Once again, on entering that house on Cork Hill, Mary was greeted by the sound of footsteps coming up the stairs. Now she had a quick look around, but she couldn't find anything. So feeling a bit nervous and a bit on edge, she decided to pack up her stuff and leave. On leaving that house on Cork Hill, Mary was stopped by a workman outside who warned her not to take the house as it was haunted. The workman told Mary that this house used to be a meeting place for a notorious gang of assassins who were responsible for many crimes, but most Famously, the Phoenix Park Murders of 1882. Now the Phoenix Park Murders is the name given to the gruesome stabbings of Lord Frederick Cavendish and Thomas Henry Burke. These stabbings were carried out by a gang of nationalist assassins known as the Invincibles. After the murders. The three leaders of the Invincibles turned on their own men and testified against them in court. Five men were sentenced to be hanged. It is believed that as they were being dragged to the gallows, they swore revenge on their traitorous leaders. The workman told Mary that it was the spirits of these five men who wandered the rooms and corridors of Cork Hill, seeking revenge on anyone who dwelled there. Mary took this information to John, but John, John was not so easily deterred. He decided to spend his first night alone in the house. He took with him some candles, candlestick, matches and some books. 
and intended to have a lone vigil in the house. Sure enough, <laughs> during the night, Byrne was awoken by an almighty commotion coming from downstairs. As he hurried to light his candles, he heard what sounded like someone treading heavily up the last flight of stairs. The footsteps came all the way to the top and stopped. All of a sudden, the door swung open and as the footsteps passed through the room, all of Byrne's personal belongings were thrown violently around. Byrne cowered in the corner and screamed. The footsteps finally stopped. The commotion coming from downstairs also ceased. And everything in the room returned to its original position. Of course, the commotion had been coming from the room with the word ghosts written above the mantelpiece. Needless enough to say, but the cousins withdrew their application for that house on Cork Hill, as it was clear they were not welcome there. <laughs> well, that or perhaps these were friendly spirits and they were trying to warn them. As you see, one year later in 1903, a vicious and destructive storm ripped through Dublin and a falling chimney stack gutted that house on Cork Hill, surely killing anyone that would have been inside. Or maybe that's just coincidence. Well, uh, I know better. <laughs>